Hey everybody, it's Miss Moran and I'm here to talk to you this week about rounding using place value. I know students have done some rounding in the past and a lot of times students come into fourth grade with some rules, some very specific rules about five or more round up, four or less, we're gonna round down. But when we start to get into numbers all the way into the hundred thousands and up until the millions, um, that rule is sometimes confusing because there's so many digits and they lose track of what number it is they're supposed to be rounding up or down. So a couple questions we're gonna ask ourselves for understanding rounding and understanding it really in terms of its whole values um, and not just a bunch of places and digits are these two questions here. Can you identify the surrounding benchmarks? And once you've identified them, can you identify the midpoint and then compare your number to that, rounding up or down if your number is below or above the midpoint? Okay, so we're gonna start with a few examples over here. Um, when we're working with numbers um, like this into the thousands, it's always easiest for students to round to the largest place possible. So in this case, when we're rounding to the nearest thousand, we would ask students, can you skip count by 1,000? These would be your benchmarks, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, and so on. In this case, this number is greater than 6,000, but not as much as 7,000. So in order to decide how we would round that, we would look at the rest of this number over here and say, well, the midpoint is gonna be 6,500. 352 is below that, so this is gonna be closer to 6,000. Um, we're going to do some um, number lines this week as well. And we can kind of think about this almost as an imaginary number line, with this being our low value and our high value and considering the midpoint. Okay, this is a number in the 10,000s, 37,436. So again, when we're rounding to the largest place possible, really sort of thinking about what 10,000s is this between? Can I count by 10,000s? 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, and so on. So this falls between 30,000 and 40,000, with my midpoint being 35,000. So looking at this, you can see 37 is above 35,000 and would be closer to 40,000 than 30,000. So 37,436 would round to 40,000. All right, this is a number in the hundred thousands. So again, rounding to the largest place possible, can I skip count by 100 thousands? 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, and so on. This is gonna be more than 100,000, but not as much as 200,000. My halfway point would be between 100 and 200, be 150,000. So I'm looking at all of this to tell me that this 123 is going to be um, below my halfway point, and so this is going to round down to 100,000. Okay, so all of those examples were examples where we were looking to round to the largest place possible. When we get into numbers where we're not rounding to the largest place possible, sometimes this throws students off. Um, but we're going to follow the same procedure. We're just going to think about, in this case, um, it's a number in the 10,000s, but we're, instead we're rounding to the nearest thousand. So again, when I'm rounding to the nearest thousand, that's skip counting of 1,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. A lot of times students will see this and say that the number is in between 3,000 and 4,000. What they really have to understand is it's not 3,000 and 4,000, it's 43,000 and 44,000. Now how do I know whether it's closer to 43 or 44,000? That's from the rest of the number. 726 tells me that it is over the halfway point of 43,500, and so it's gonna round up to 44,000. Okay, here's an example into the hundred thousands where we're still rounding only to the nearest thousand. So can I skip count by one thousands? One thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, and so on. This would be 375 and 376,000. Okay, my halfway point between those, 375 and 376,000, is gonna be 375,500. So looking at the rest of this, that 426 is gonna be below the 500 that I would need to round up. And so this number is gonna round down to 375,000. All right, my last example here is an example into the 100,000s where we are rounding to the nearest 10,000. So can I skip count by tens? That's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60,000, and so on. This would be between 30,000 and 40,000, as some students like to think of it that way, but it's not really between 30 and 40,000. It's a much larger number than that. So it's really between 330,000 and 340,000. 
Um, so the midway point between 330 and 340,000 is 335,000. So I'll look at the rest of this. 38 tells me that that is above the 335,000. So that's going to round up to 340,000. All right, um, another skill we're gonna be working with is comparing numbers using greater than and less than. Again, these symbols are nothing new. They've been using them since first grade. Um, sometimes students are still confused about which one is the greater than and which one is the less than sign. They usually say, oh, the alligator mouth is the bigger one. Well, they both have an alligator mouth. So um, what we need to remember is that we read number sentences from left to right, just like we read words. So um, in this case, 326,473 compared to 324,896. They both have values of three in the 100,000. They both have two in the 10,000s, but this one has a six in the thousands place, giving it a larger value. So the larger side is gonna to open towards that larger number. And this is going to be a greater than sign. Okay, we read this number first. So this number, 326,473, is greater than 324,896. Um, and this one, 43,735 compared to 43,753. Both have fours in the 10,000s place, threes in the thousands, sevens in the hundreds. Here's where it changes. This is 53 compared to 35. So this one over here is gonna be greater than but we read from left to right. So this one is the less than number. So we're gonna read this as 43,785 is less than 43,753. So I usually tell my students, since we're reading left to right, what we really wanna read is we wanna read this side of the symbol. Okay, so when you see that the left side of the symbol, because it's really talking about this left number first, when this is the larger opening, we're gonna read that as greater than. And here, this one is the closed off side, the tiny part here. So we're gonna read that as this number is less than. So we're reading the symbol from left to right, just like we read the number sentence from left to right. All right, one more skill we're gonna do in this chapter before we test next week. And that is to take some numbers and to be able to turn them into the largest or, poss or smallest possible value using these numbers. So I just have the numbers here, one, three, four, six, eight, and nine. So if I wanted to make the least possible number using those, um, there's a six digit number. What I'd wanna do is I wanna put the smallest values into the largest places. So my largest place value is gonna be the hundred thousands, but I wanna have the smallest number of hundred thousands possible. So I put a one there, and a three, a four, a six, an eight, and a nine. So I'm putting my largest values um, in terms of digits in the place that's gonna give them the least amount of value, like the ones place. Um, if I wanted to make the greatest possible number using these same digits, I just reverse that. I want the larger digits in the larger places. Okay, so using those exact same digits, we got a much larger number using the larger digits in the larger place values. So this is the least possible number I could make, and this would be the greatest possible number I can make. Students will notice that pattern very quickly, um, that this is um, least to greatest, and these digits are greatest to least. All right, thank you very much for watching. Our test will be next week on Tuesday.